The movie starts with Maxwell Max, an analyst for the top secret American intelligence agency, Control, who wants to become a field agent, just like an agent he idolizes, known as Agent 23. He has taken a test to become a field agent, and is really excited for it. Their office is in a museum. Max gets to his office carrying a bunch of files, and tries to flirt with the receptionist, but she does not really seem interested in him. After that, Agent 23 walks in, and everyone turns toward him, including the receptionist. Agent 23 is the man who is always in the spotlight at his office. When Max walks into his office, everyone seems to be making fun of him. However, there are two men from the technical branch, who respect Max and his work. For a few days, Max has been spying on a Russian agency known as Chaos. He tells everyone that these guys are planning a nuclear attack behind these walls. He also plays a recording for everyone, in which two people are talking in Russian. Max briefs everyone about what has been going on in there. The scene then changes, and we are taken to Chechnya in Russia. The people from Chaos go to take the nuclear weapons, and one of the men suggests, that they light the place on fire after they have acquired the weapons. After they have gotten what they wanted, a man says that they need to burn the place, and should be on their way. The man's boss does not like his goodness, and shoots the man right away. Elsewhere, Max's result has come out, his scores are good, and he is eligible to become a field agent, his boss however seems to have other plans for him. He wants him to remain at the post of analyst, because it is what he does best, and they do not think that anyone else would be able to fill the void, if he leaves the post vacant. Max's heart is broken, as he has worked very hard to become a field agent, including losing 80 pounds. Max goes out, and as he talks to a dog on a street, a girl bumps into him. Max forgets all his worries, gathers himself right away, and starts to flirt with the girl, but the girl is not interested at all. After that, Max makes his way to the control headquarters, and he is shocked to see that the whole building has been destroyed. It turns out, that the headquarters has been attacked by the terrorist organization Chaos, and almost all of Control's agents' identities are exposed, leaving only Agent 99 as a viable field operative. Max quickly understands the situation, and as he looks around, a girl keeps a gun on his head from behind, and it turns out to be the girl who had just bumped into him. She is Agent 99, who got surgery recently. As they sit together, they hear footsteps approaching, Max tries to make the girl understand his plan by giving signals, but she gets annoyed, and asks him to speak up. Max gets up, and tries to avert the attention of the people approaching them, he attacks one of them with a cylinder, and as he does that, it turns out to be his chief. Chaos now has all the data of Control's agents, and all over the world, their agents start getting killed. Now, it all comes down to Agent 99 and Agent 87, who is none other than Max. Max's lifelong dream has finally been fulfilled. As the boss tells him that, everyone claps for him. The experienced Agent 99 is however reluctant to partner with him, due to his inexperience, but she doesn't really seem to have much of a choice. On the first day of his new job, Max receives a Swiss Army knife, which includes special add-ons, like a miniature flamethrower, and a crossbow that shoots darts attached to spider web thread. After that, both Max and Agent 99 take a flight from Washington to Moscow. As they are on the plane, they get into an argument over wanting different things from their married lives. Agent 99 then spots a threatening looking man in the back. She suspects he is an assassin, but Max brushes it off as profiling. Max says she is just being judgmental, one cannot suspect anyone of being a killer just because they are huge. She then asks him to turn and take a look at the man, and as he does that, he gets shocked. He starts making fun of the man's height. He then goes on to add, that the guy can devour a whole plane. Max notices gum on his shoe, and tries to remove it with a matchstick. When passengers assume Max is attempting to blow up the aircraft, he is tackled by an air marshal, and his hands are put into zip ties. Max requests to use the bathroom, and while inside, attempts to break his zip ties using the crossbow on his pocket knife. He does finally break the zip tie, but one of the darts hits the eject button, and leaves him plummeting with no parachute, and behind her jumps the suspected assassin. The latter prevents all three from crashing, when Agent 99 kisses him, surprising him enough for her to deploy the parachute. The assassin crashes in a barn, and Agent 99 and Max assume he is dead, though he is berated by her for the incident. Back at the office, Agent 23 is made fun of by a man who used to pick on Max, but Agent 23 is not one to take crap from anyone, so he staples the head of the bully to teach him a lesson. Max and Agent 99 have gone to Russia, in hopes of catching a Russian drug dealer, who works for Chaos. The two arrive at the mansion of Chaos's chief bomb maker, Ladislas Kerstich, during a party. Max looks around trying to spot him, but the man himself approaches them, and introduces himself, 
Agent 99 looks really hot, and Kerstich takes her with him. When Kerstich asks her if it is okay with the man, she goes on to insult Max, but he tries to keep his focus on the mission. Max asks Agent 99 to come and help him, but she is too busy dancing with the drug dealer. He then spots a big girl, and asks her to dance with him. He turns out to be a pro in dancing, and everyone turns their attention to him, and he is applauded by all the people in there. After that, he and Agent 99 manage to sneak inside, and 99 asks him if he spotted anything of note while she was dancing, and he replies, that the only thing he saw was him picking her up. They walk through a sewer to get there. As they go in, there is a whole net of laser beams, and they move very cautiously. Agent 99 asks Max to just copy her moves, and he is going to be fine. When it is Max's turn, a rat gets into his pants, and he loses his balance. As both of them are stealing the data, they get attacked. Things look really bad for them, but with their bravery and cleverness, they manage to kill the security guards. They now learn that their main office is below a bakery. They then infiltrate the main office, and trace nuclear material to a chaos nuclear weapons factory, disguised as a Moscow bakery. In the bakery, Max meets with chaos boss Siegfried, and is second in command, Starker, only to learn that a double agent has compromised their identities. Max manages to escape and destroy the weapons factory, but he and Agent 99 are confronted by the same man, that they had assumed dead earlier. All seems lost, but Max recognizes the man as Dalip, who was in a recording taken during Max's time as an analyst. He gives Dalip advice on fixing his failing marriage, and Dalip promptly lets them go. The chief sends Agent 23 to observe the cleanup of the factory, but Chaos sneaks the weapons out through the Moskva River beforehand, leaving Agent 23 convinced, that only a bakery had been destroyed. Realizing that Max was alone during his key discoveries, Control believes him to be the double agent. Agent 99, who has gradually been developing feelings with Max, is heartbroken, but takes him into custody, just when he starts suspecting that she is the double agent. Meanwhile, conferring with Starker, Siegfried plans to detonate a nuclear bomb in Los Angeles, while the president is in the city. Siegfried contacts the US government, during a meeting attended by the chief and the vice president, and threatens to release nuclear weapon detonator codes to hostile countries, unless he is paid a ransom of $200 billion. The members of the meeting, especially the vice president, who has intense enmity towards the chief, do not take the call seriously, to the chief's dismay, while Max is in a control holding cell, Dalip sends him a coded message via the radio show, American Top 40, posing as his girlfriend, alerting him to Siegfried's plan. Max comes up with a plan, and tricks the prison guards as he manages to escape. He then arrives in Los Angeles, to reunite with the chief, Agent 99 and Agent 23. He convinces them that he is not the double agent. Meanwhile, as the president arrives at the Disney Hall for a concert, Siegfried Starker and Dalip plant the bomb in the concert hall. When Max's Geiger counter-equipped watch picks up traces of radiation from Agent 23, they realize Agent 23 is the real double agent. Agent 23 takes Agent 99 hostage, and flees in a vehicle. After a chase, Max manages to rescue Agent 99, but in the struggle, the car is set on fire, and forced onto railroad tracks. Max kisses Agent 23 to distract him, a trick learned from Agent 99. He and Agent 99 are thrown off the vehicle, before it collides with a freight train, killing Agent 23. After analyzing Agent 23's nuclear football, Max realizes that the bomb will be triggered by the final note of Beethoven's Ode to Joy. They rush to the Disney Hall, and Max tackles the elderly conductor just before the final note, saving the president in Los Angeles. Siegfried, despite his plan failing, is satisfied with Dalip's performance, and promises not to kill his wife, as he would have had Dalip failed, but states that he would be doing the sighted world a favor if he did. In response, Dalip throws Siegfried into a river, much to Starker's delight. Back in control headquarters, a party is held in Max's honor, where Agent 99 gives him a puppy. Max is given honors, and gets his dream of becoming a real spy. The End Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.